Hello, my name is Hugo, and today I'm going to talk about why we need kernel initialization over the network data plane. Okay, so most of you are probably familiar with how a traditional kernel network stack works. In this model, the kernel sits between the NIC and applications and is responsible for mediating all the data transfers to the network. And while this model worked really well for many decades, in the last 10 years or so, we saw NIC speeds uh, growing significantly while CPU performance started to plateau. And as a, as a result, the kernel became a bottleneck to many network applications. And the reason the kernel performs poorly is that it has to introduce overhead due to data movement. So it needs to copy data between the kernel space and user space, and it also has overhead due to system calls. So as a response, there have been many proposals that advocate for a kernel bypass network stack. And in this model, you let applications uh, interface directly with the NIC without going through the kernel. So now because you're avoiding this additional data movement, you are able to achieve much better performance. The problem is that kernel bypass also leads to maintenance and manageability nightmare for administrators. And this nightmare really stems from the kernel bypass's inability to fully replicate kernel functionality. And to illustrate why this is the case, I'm going to show an example using Alice, who is a system administrator, and Bob, who is a newly hired intern. Okay, so Bob is actually quite happy. He just deployed his first application to production. The problem is that soon after, Bob realizes that his application is sending too much traffic, not leaving enough bandwidth for the database. Well, Alice knows what she needs to do. All she needs to do is prioritize traffic from the database over traffic from Bob's application. And for that, she can use tools like DC to start queuing disciplines in the kernel. And since the kernel can oversee all the traffic, it is able to impose arbitrary policy. But writing a very inefficient application wasn't the only mistake that Bob made. He also set a weak password, and that caused the server to be compromised with the malicious web server. And again, Alice knows what she has to do. She only needs to find which application is listening on port 80, and for that, she can rely on the kernel's knowledge of all the open sockets in the system. And use tools like Maxdat or SS to find which process is listening on port 80. And these are only two examples of the many policies and debugging capabilities that are made possible by the kernel's ability to interpose in other traffic. Now, if we move to a kernel bypass strategy, we no longer have kernel interposition, and it's no longer possible to enforce these policies or have centralized debugging capabilities. And there are existing alternatives that look at how to bring interposition back to kernel bypass. So for example, Google uses a system called Snap, which implements the network stack as a separate process running in a different core. And because it forces traffic from all applications to go through Snap, it is able to implement some of these uh, policies we saw that are usually implemented inside the kernel. The problem is that when it does that, it also has to reintroduce data movement overhead, because now data has to, to hop between different cores before going out or before reaching the application. Another alternative is Microsoft's Axonet. And what Axonet does is to move a virtual switch to the NIC. And again, because this virtual switch can interpose between applications in the network, you can also implement some policies. The problem is that Axonet, uh, in the Axonet, the control lies with the hypervisor. So it has no visibility into the applications running inside virtual machines. So many of the policies uh, we want to implement actually require visibility into applications. So like in the example I gave, where we want to prioritize traffic from one application with the other, 
we need to know uh, from which application the traffic is coming from. Or if you want to know which sockets are open, we also need to, to have access to the kernel's uh, data structure with the open sockets. OK, so what do we really want? We want something that is logically like the kernel network stack, while also being physically like kernel bypass. So we want to have kernel interposition without reintroducing these data movement overheads. So we want something that is on path. And our proposal to this is this new OS architecture that we call COPY. And COPY stands for kernel on path interposition. And the idea is quite simple. We leverage programmable smart nets to implement a network data plane that is both on path while also being logically controlled by the kernel. And here's what it means more concretely. We're going to use this smart neck in a CPU. And on the CPU, we have the kernel, which acts as a control plane. And the kernel is also responsible for defining the data plane functionality that runs in this smart neck. So for that, the kernel can actually install code on the neck to define the data plane functionality. And that is in contrast with the traditional offload approach where these offloads are defined by hardware vendors, not the kernel. And the reason this is essential is that data plane functionality changes often. So for instance, in Linux, over the last year alone, we saw hundreds of new commits on network filters and on network schedulers. And now applications can talk directly with the kernel for control plane operations and with the copy data plane for data plane operations. So right now we are developing a new operating system that we call Norman that implements a copy data plane. And Norman really has two main pieces. First, it has a copy data plane that runs on an FPGA smart neck. And that is responsible for all the data plane functionality that requires in a position. So things like filters, uh, queuing disciplines, packet sniffing, and others. And now the library is responsible for all the remaining data plane functionality that does not require a position. And then the kernel itself, which is based on Linux, is responsible for all the control plane operations. So things like connection establishment termination, policy configurations, and defining the data plane functionality. So now, if you want to use it like a tools like IP tables to set a filtering rule, we're going to use that tool as we usually do with Linux. But now the kernel not only sets its own data structures, but it's also responsible for configuring this rule in the COPE data plane. And the same for other uh, policy configuration tools like PC. And now, if the application wants to open a new connection, you can do so by calling connect. And since this is a control plane operation, the library can direct that to the kernel. And then the kernel is responsible for configuring this new connection in the copy data plane. Once this connection is established, now the application can go right, and then the library will direct this data directly to the copy data plane. OK, so this was Norman in a nutshell. And before I conclude, I'd like to highlight only two of the many challenges we still need to address. First, we call the normal needs to keep per connection state on the NIC. And since these smart NIC devices often have limited memory, it's unclear if you can scale this design to support enough connections. Another challenge is how we actually make an FPGA reconfigurable enough for our purpose is we must be able not only to change configuration runtime, but also functionality. All right, so to conclude, I hope that I have convinced you that kernel interposition is essential. And the copy architecture really gives a path to restore kernel interposition without reintroducing overheads. And with that, I thank you.
and I can take any questions.